Let's start with the first challenge here, pH 7.50, PCO220, serum bicarb 15, measured sodium 145, and chloride 100. Before I start the analysis of this ABG, may see here I see serum bicarb, so you always use the serum bicarb, not the calculated one from the ABG, and you always use measured sodium and on the BMP or CMP, not the corrected one for hyperglycemia in case there is a critical hyperglycemia. So the first step, the pH is what, acidotic or alcohol? This pH is alcoholic, right? And this is explained by what? The serum bicarb or the PCO2? We look here, the PCO2 is 20 and the serum bicarb 15. So this is explained by the PCO2. And this is the respiratory what? Respiratory alkalosis. So this is the primary one is the respiratory alkalosis. The pH is alcoholic and explained by low PCO2. The next thing is anion gap. Is it present or not? We always calculate the anion gap and the anion gap is 30 so there is anion gap present immediately after that you jump to the delta delta and the delta delta 30 which is the current anion gap minus the normal anion gap which is 12 plus the measured serum bicarb here so it is 33 so what does that mean so we have a primary respiratory alkalosis there is anion gap present so there is anion gap as metabolic acidosis high anion gap metabolic acidosis and the 33 is higher than the normal bicarb which is 22 to 26 so so this means there is a metabolic alkalosis. So the final analysis, as we said, primary respiratory alkalosis, increased anion metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. These three acid-based disturbances coexist in this case. And this patient was an alcoholic patient with pneumonia and vomiting. So the primary respiratory alkalosis is probably explained by the pneumonia, and the increased anion metabolic acidosis probably from alcoholic ketosis. And the metabolic alkalosis probably from the vomiting. This example is a clear example that even high pH does not rule out metabolic acidosis. Let's move to the next example. pH 7.4, PCO240, which is normal, and we're using American units. Serum bicarb 24, which is normal. Major sodium 145, chloride 100. If you look at this normal number, probably you'll just stop there, right? That's why you need to analyze systematically. So the pH here is normal. We don't stop there. As we said in multiple times, we go and calculate the anion gap. And the anion gap here is 21, right? As you see here, 21. So there is anion gap. The anion gap is present immediately. If the anion gap is high, we go to the delta delta. The anion gap is normal or low, we don't use the delta delta. Only if it's high. Delta delta is 21, which is the anion gap here, minus normal anion gap, plus the serum bicarb 24, and it's 33. There is bicarb that's higher than normal bicarb, which we use 22 to 26. This is the normal serum bicarb. In this case, we have increased anion gap, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. And this patient, this particular patient was a patient with CKD and vomiting. So you can see that the increased and again metabolic acidosis is explained by the CKD and the metabolic alkalosis is explained by vomiting. This is a clear example that acidosis and alkalosis can coexist, but only increased anion gap metabolic acidosis can coexist with the metabolic alkalosis. The metabolic alkalosis does not coexist with normal anion gap metabolic acidosis because it's all about bicarb loss or gain. You, if you do have two pathophysiologies that one cause gain and one cause loss, the net will decide if you're going to get alkalosis or acidosis. pH 7.5, PCO2 20, bicarb, serum bicarb 15, sodium 14 the major sodium and this is the serum bicarb and the chloride 103. So the pH is what? Alcoholic, right? And this explained by bicarb or PCO2 and clearly it's explained by PCO2 which is low. We use 40 as normal. So by PCO2, so this is the respiratory, a primary respiratory disorder. This is a primary respiratory alkalosis. We jump to the anion gap regardless as, as we said and here the anion gap is 22 so there is anion gap. There is high anion gap metabolic acidosis is present. We jump because of that to the delta delta, step number three, 22, the current anion gap minus the normal anion gap 12, which is 10, plus the serum bicarb 15, which is 25. And this 25 is within normal bicarb range, right? So there is no metabolic alkalosis or normally any gap metabolic acidosis. So we stop with two acid-based disorder we see here. We have a primary respiratory alkalosis and we have anion gap, increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. And this case,
case was salicylate overdose this is high yield for the board exam as we said multiple times normal ph and normal bicarb do not rule out high anion metabolic acidosis and high anion metabolic acidosis can coexist with metabolic alkalosis as i explained because two different pathophysiology this is from acids excess in the ecf and this is related to the bicarb net gain normal anion metabolic acidosis cannot coexist with metabolic alkalosis because it's either net gain or net loss of bicarb and calculate anion gap always remember that i hope you got all the challenges correct and if you do that mean you mastered abg interpretation if you want to receive a summary of this video please subscribe to my Substack. the link is provided below and if you found this video useful please give it a like share it with your colleague and if you know, if you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe before leaving right now thanks for watching and see you soon